RRV Framework, Incorporating Ethics in Financial Decisions Ethics is about doing what is right. This means acting in a manner that is morally sound and consistent with our duty to uphold that which is right and avoiding deliberate harm to others. Corporate finance is concerned with how firms obtain and allocate capital in pursuit of the firm's objectives, which includes maximizing shareholder value according to some risk return preferences. The goal of value maximization for the shareholder should be balanced by the need to take into account the interest of all other stakeholders. Historical and recent corporate finance scandals demonstrate that some financial decision makers have been unethical in their decision making process. In the past three decades, there have been 10 major global financial crises with trillions of dollars lost. Usually, investors, households, and the economy lose out. But finance practitioners responsible for the crisis seem to escape legal or financial consequences. In Nigeria, the unethical financial practices in the banking sector led to the crash of the capital market. Between March 2008 and April 2009, the market capitalization dropped from a peak of over 13.3 trillion naira to 4.5 trillion naira, a loss of over 66% in value. This created severe hardship for investors and a lack of trust in financial markets. By June of 2017, nine years after the crisis, market capitalization hovers at about 11.4 trillion naira, a far cry from its peak. Finance practitioners have very often acted in a way that suggests that finance is ethics neutral. As fiduciaries, opportunities exist for the finance decision maker to either act ethically in the interest of the shareholder or in his own narrow interest. Extending this argument, the decision maker may be working within an organizational culture that overtly or covertly promotes the achievement of results as an end worthy of pursuit without regards to the means. This puts considerable pressure on the decision maker to act in an unethical manner in pursuit of corporate and personal goals without regard to the harm caused to other stakeholders. The Harrod V framework can assist decision makers who want to act ethically to deliberately contemplate and incorporate ethics in their financial decision-making process and thus reach an ethics-adjusted decision outcome. At each stage of the financial decision and transaction process, from conceptualization to design and execution, the decision-maker must stop to think before he acts and then reflect on his decision within an ethics finance framework. The Arad V framework proposes that the foundation of ethics in finance is strong personal, professional, and corporate ethical values embedded in the culture of the decision maker and the institution it represents. The pervasive objective is to avoid deliberate harm to the counterparty and act in a way that is morally right. The decision maker must have a broad level of ethical awareness an ethical compass that creates a default consciousness that in every decision and transaction process in finance, there is a risk of harm to counterparties. Deliberate search and recognition of the specific ethical issues that is embedded in a particular transaction, financial product, design or decision is also required. This is followed by a detailed analysis of and reflection on the potential harm and how to resolve this in the transaction design and execution process. Then, an ethics-adjusted decision can be taken. The financial decision maker should ask very rigorous and penetrating questions along each pillar of the Harrod V framework and along the transaction flow. Values. From conception through to design and execution. Am I driven by a corporate and personal culture and values that promote strong ethical awareness and a focus on outcomes that do the least harm and promote the greater long-term good rather than short-term corporate or personal gains at the expense of others. Awareness. Do I have a pervasive awareness that all financial transactions have potential ethical implications such as conflict of interest, possible harm to counterparties and other stakeholders and that as a decision maker I must 
actively seek out these ethical dilemmas and deal with them in the design and execution of the transactions. Recognition. Have I identified the specific ethical issues in the design of this financial transaction and product? And am I equipped to deal with them so as to avoid deliberate harm to counterparties and clients? Analysis and reflection. Am I fulfilling my responsibility as a fiduciary and am I likely to be in breach of my fiduciary responsibilities? Is this transaction likely to harm anyone? How can this harm be averted? Do I need to redesign the transaction or stop it completely? Decision. Can this transaction pass the look in the mirror test? In other words, can I stand behind my decision in all good conscience and not behind some legal loophole that seeks to validate my unethical actions on the basis of legality rather than moral and ethical values, remembering that not all that is legal is ethical? While being ethical may not always result in economic gain, at least in the short term, it is the right and moral thing to do. Your actions and reputation as an ethical finance practitioner and consistent efforts to reach ethics-adjusted financial decisions and outcomes will not only protect relevant stakeholders, but will create economic and social value for you in the long term. And keep financial markets and the economy functioning fairly and efficiently for the good of all.